In the Torah portion of Shemais, we read the story of Moses, Redeemer of Israel. Maimonides says he was the greatest man who ever lived. Shleimus min haenushi, says Maimonides, which means the perfection of the human species. And this was the man who God chose to redeem us from Egypt. Now, what gives someone redemptive powers? That might sound a little aloof, but we all need redemptive powers. We all have problems. We all have um, difficulties that need solving situations that we just feel locked in and someone needs to let us out. What gives us the ability to redeem ourselves from a position? So Moses himself was born in Egypt, but his mother, Yocheved, interestingly, was born outside Egypt. In, uh, the Talmud says that she was born as they were passing through the walls, but she was born outside Egypt. And here the Kabbalists discern a very powerful lesson, that to solve a problem you need to have some sort of external insight. Moses, through his mother, was not bound by Egypt because she was not born in Egypt. He didn't come from the context of Egypt. He had, through his mother, uh, access to powers which transcended the limitations of Egypt, if you like. He was out of the Egyptian box and therefore he was able to solve the problem. And that is why we need Torah. That is why we need spiritual insight from uh, a source outside us. Because, you know, we're very smart, humankind is very intelligent. Uh, so why don't we just solve all our problems? I mean, look at the wonders of modern medicine, look at the wonders of modern political science, look at the lessons we've learned throughout history. So let's just humankind evolve and, and progress gradually. No, says the Torah. Because humankind is part of the problem, it's part of the box. We were born in this world, so we will never eventually solve the problems of this world. We need an external solution, which is the Torah. The Torah is a heavenly document, it's not an earthly document. It was given on earth, but its source is heavenly, and therefore it has the power to redeem us from our problems that come from reading it every week, from listening to it in the synagogue every week, from absorbing its very words implanted with light and holiness and therefore present an external solution to our inner problems. Chapter 2 verse 10 we have the name of Moses in Hebrew Moshe which, which uh, is derived says the Torah from the term Mim Hamayim Mishisihu that I drew him out of the water. Why is this the name of Moses? You know your name is actually your mission statement. It's your soul's mission statement in life, in Hebrew, your Hebrew name. Uh, it, tells something, it tells us something about why you are here and your unique abilities to fulfill that mission. Why was the name of Moshe, the Redeemer of Israel, uh, connected with drawing out of water? So, very simply, water conceals. Unlike dry land, you know, you go on dry land, you see animals, you see everything that's there. Uh, go to the top of the Empire State Building and you will see for 20-30 miles. But if you go underwater, you don't see that far. Well, actually, I mean, the, the point is that from outside the water, we don't see in the water. It covers. You don't see all the fish and whales and aquatic life that's there. So, the water represents the power to conceal. And in our lives, that means restraint. Do we disclose everything in our relationships? When we're teaching students, do we tell them everything we know? When we're uh, telling the public about our product, how much do we reveal to them? All these are decisions that we're making in terms of concealment. In the Kabbalistic metaphor, guvura, the power to restrain. But then sometimes, other times, the other most fundamental human emotion of chesed, of giving, do we express love to our family members, to our partners? Do we... Um, Tell the truth. Just let it out and bear the consequences because we believe in authenticity. These are all examples of chesed, of revealing, of disclosing, the, the desire to disclose. And mastery, leadership, greatness depends on our ability to effectively juggle these two priorities. It's the interface between chesed and gevura, the border between water and land that symbolizes greatness. And that is why Moses, who is described as the greatest human being who ever lived, is named after the interface between dry land and water. I drew him out of the water. He is the one who can balance chesed and guvura in perfect harmony. Chapter 4, verse 1, we read how when God asks Moses to go on this mission and redeem the Jewish people, 
Moses says, they won't believe in me. What did he mean? They won't believe in his abilities? So there's a Kabbalistic reading that they wouldn't believe in him because of his disposition, his spiritual makeup. Moses, at the end of the day, well, I mentioned before, he was this balance between Chesed and Gevurah, and he harmonized the two, but from his own personal disposition, he was a little bit inclined towards Din, towards the Gevurah side. And that is why Judaism, in the end of the day, ended up as a religion of law. I mean, open up the five books of Moses, they are filled with laws. And that is because Moses represent, uh, embodied the attribute of Din, of judgment, of law, which has a severe side to it. And that is why Moses was worried. They won't believe in me. Not because they wouldn't believe in his authenticity. They don't want a religion that is so legally based. They won't believe in a redeemer who is a man of din. Says God, we need din. The reason why the supernatural, why God can connect with the world, is because of the power of Gvura, the power of din. It's necessary. The 613 mitzvot, the 613 commandments, must be precise. They have rules. And it's through that position that we access the transcendent. So says God, I'm sending you because you're a man of din. But, it's a good point, you have a little too much din. So I will send with you Aaron. Aaron is a man of chesed, he is a man of love, he is a man of kindness. So between the two of you, you will have the perfect balance. Chapter 4, verse 10, we read how Moses, in one of his complaints to God, why he didn't want to take this mission, says, I am heavy of mouth and heavy of tongue. I'm not a good speaker, I'm not a great orator, you need a, this, is, this person's going to be an ambassador of the Jewish people, he needs to speak well. What is the meaning behind this? So, you know, when someone's absolutely brilliant, we call them a genius. But if someone's absolutely brilliant and you can't understand what they're talking about, you call them a madman. Brilliance doesn't just depend on insight. It depends on the ability to put it into words. In the Kabbalistic metaphor, arot lights into kalim, into vessels. You need the vessel. And because Moses was the most inspired man who ever lived, his light exceeded the vessels uh, with which he could articulate that light. And that is why he started. That is why he didn't speak well, because he was so inspired. So there's actually a positive message here. And um, the message to us, of course, is the importance of Kalim, the importance of finding vessels. Uh, I think one of the reasons why Jewish spirituality, uh, meditation, Kabbalistic insight, Hasidic insight has not achieved the widespread dissemination that it could is because we lack the language. It's difficult to find words to express these subtle spiritual concepts. And so the message of Moses' inability to speak is that Judaism in general which was founded by Moses, suffers from this problem. We have tremendous light, and uh, all that is required is finding the vessel, finding the language, finding that turn of phrase, the, nu the correct nuance in the language, which is going to give across this most profound of all messages. Actually, this insight reminds me of a brief story, which I once read about um, Lubavitch Rebbe, when he uh, used to give his discourses in the early years, in the 50s, he didn't like them being taped. In those days, they actually used ref records, LP records. Um, and once they, uh, he agreed to let them make a record, it was on a, a weekday, it was, of course, not, of course, on a Sabbath, and um, he made, they, they made this record on condition, he said, that they destroy it afterwards, because he doesn't want a permanent record. And so the editors, after they'd used it to write down the discourse, they had this argument, like, no one wants to destroy the record. So they, uh, one of the students went in to the Rebbe and they said, well, you know, we've got this problem, no one wants to destroy it. So the Rebbe says, play it to me, I want to hear it. And he put one leg on the chair and he put his hand in his face and he listened to the whole Hasidic discourse, which is, you know, this wonderful, I have this wonderful image of the Rebbe listening to his own discourse. And at the end, he said to the editors, now I know why you have questions. And he said in Yiddish, that sometimes, you know, my mind is flowing with mystical insight so much that you just, I simply can't find the words to put it. That is the challenge of every mystic, to find the vessels, which is so beautifully put in this week's Pasha about Moses. Spiritual message of the week, one of the most profound ideas in this week's Pasha. The Jews were only redeemed when they cried out to God. Traditionally, uh, we are taught to be meek in the presence of God and accept whatever He sends us. But if you want redemption, you want Him to disclose 
great lights in your life. Cry to God. Complain to Him. Scream at Him. And then He will hear you. Because that's the simple message. Basic biblical message of this week's Pasha. That redemption comes when people cry out. Thank you so much for listening, and please join us again next week for Torah and 10.